Each week, the top news stories of the past seven days are analyzed and discussed on KCET's Los Angeles News Review. A panel of reporters from various Southern California publications is moderated by Nick Williams, editor emeritus of the Los Angeles Times. Learn the stories behind the stories. Watch the Los Angeles News Review Friday evenings at 7.30. Coming up next on Feeling Good. Just follow my procedure, and if anyone should need you... I hate it when Rosie dies. Sing to the baby. Feeling Good moves to a new time tomorrow night at 8 on KCET. o'clock report with Jerry Dunphy, Bill Keen with the weather, Bob Dunn with sports, plus reports from Barry Serafin in Washington, Bill Ames in New Hampshire, Warren Olney in Benicia, California, and Jim Cooper in Anaheim. Now, Jerry Dunphy. From the desert to the sea to all of Southern California, a good evening. Los Angeles High School, the city's oldest, has come to an inglorious end. Its foundation crumbled by an earthquake, its remains ravaged by fire. This bell tower, a long Los Angeles landmark, and familiar to millions of viewers of the TV program Room 222, had stood proudly through hundreds of earthquakes, including the one in 1933. Even the quake of last February, which so heavily damaged the school that officials ordered it demolished, could not humble it. But the bell tower could not withstand the heat of today's flames. In the end, it became a charred, crumpled mass. Fire broke out shortly after 5 p.m. on the main floor of the administration building as workmen from the Cleveland Wrecking Company were tearing down the structure. The school was 50% demolished with only the auditorium and sections of the administration building remaining. Within minutes, the flames had enveloped the structures and the workers' demolition job had come to an end. All that was left was for fire crews to... ...all that in about 24 hours. Al Wyman, Eyewitness News, Manchester, New Hampshire. Should the mayor decide to enter the New Hampshire primary, one of those he might have to run against would be Washington Senator Henry Jackson, a man who says he has not yet made up his mind about seeking the presidency, but who certainly is traveling and talking in a style that most people recognize as pre-presidential hopefulness. In Los Angeles today, Jackson was asked about Yorty. How do you know the mayor Sam Yorty? I served in the house with uh, Mayor Yorty. Is there anything uh, between you two whereby he says that if you run in New Hampshire, he may not? I have uh, not discussed uh, any matter with uh, Mayor Yorty for a long time, and I've never discussed anything about an election with him. What do you think of the mayor's chances in the end? Pardon me? What do you think of his chances in the end? I have no idea. I really have no idea. I have not been up there, and I all I know is what I read in the newspapers and uh, listen to you all on TV and radio. Senator Jackson also had some comment on the apparent change in this country's relations with communist China. The subject was prompted by the recommendation today that a presidential commission made that mainland China join nationalist China in membership in the United Nations. Referring to what he called ping-pong diplomacy, Senator Jackson said that he had spoken out more than a year ago for improved relations with communist China. The thing we need to watch in all of this is indeed Russian behavior and reaction as a result of these new moves that we have made towards communist China. I think it would be indeed uh, unwise to assume 
from this current state of euphoria that we're in that we're about to resolve uh, all of our problems. This is uh, but an eye-opener in a much larger drama. Senator Edmund Muskie attacked the Nixon administration tonight for what he calls spying on citizens, and he also attacked it for criticizing the news media. He told a group of magazine editors that the FBI watches almost anyone who supports changes in the country's policies. In New Orleans, Vice President Agnew said most congressional critics of FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover are what he called presidential hopefuls trying to score points with the radical left. And he said Senator Muskie shares the phobia of those who believe that they are under surveillance.